In this week's Blizzard Weekly, we talk about patch 5.2 hitting the public test realm in World of Warcraft. Team Liquid launches a new StarCraft Brood War Pro League. Diablo 3's PvP is getting delayed again. And what community manager duties are at Blizzard. And Blizz Planet is turning 10 years old this year, and we have an awesome giveaway for you. Hey everybody, welcome to the newest episode of Blizz Planet Weekly. That's right, I think we finally settled on that name. Now, I'm your host, Chris Arnone. Yeah, still bearded, still a gamer. You know, maybe not formally the title anymore, but you get the gist. All right, let's get right into that weekly news roundup for World of Warcraft. Here's the beef. So first up, big thing to talk about in World of Warcraft this week. Patch 5.2 has gone live in the public test realms. Now, we're now calling this the Thunder Patch. Thunder, 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 patch, ho! Yeah, I didn't write that joke. <clears throat> anyway, uh, this patch is all about the Thunder King coming back, all right? So it'll be a new daily quest hub called Isle of the Thunder King, and the Alliance and Horde will be uh, spearheading assaults on the island uh, with Jaina Proudmoor leading the Kirin Moor and Lor Thamar Theron leading the Sunweaver Onslaught. It's amazing how I just get to pronounce all these made-up words, right? <clears throat> but as players conquer the Isle, they'll eventually unlock the powerful Lightning Forge. Now, this will allow blacksmiths to forge mighty raid-worthy raid items, as well as classic weapons from the past. So, really great incentive to go and knock out those new daily quests. New raid, of course, Thunder-related. It's called Throne of Thunder, will be available. It's got 12 new heroic encounters, or raid encounters divided into four different wings, and if players beat the Emperor Lei Shen in heroic they'll unlock a 13th boss. Pretty cool, right? Uh, <clears throat> now, two new world bosses are also available in this patch 5.2. Nalak the Storm Lord and Undasta. Uh, so Nalak is the gate guardian of the Thunder King Citadel, and Undasta is a great devil sword. It's been qu outfitted with weaponry by Zandalari in the mysterious Isle of Giants north of Kunlai Summit. Lots of made-up. All right. Uh, players will be able to also purchase farmland if they helped Farmer Yoon in the Sunsong Reach. It's part of that. Now, once purchased, they can use this like an inn, so they can bind it to themselves, instantly log out. Uh, they can also receive work orders from factions, and completing those work orders uh, will increase their reputation with said factions. So, nice bonus stuff there. And finally, it's a little thing, but for Warlocks, it's a big thing. Uh, you're getting a daily uh, a new quest that will change the color of your fire spells to fell green. This is something Warlocks have been just lusting after for a while, and it's finally here. You can finally complete this quest and make your fire spells fell green. <clears throat> so that does it for World of Warcraft. Let's go. Weekly news roundup for StarCraft II. You want a piece of me, boy? So let's talk StarCraft, not StarCraft II, though. So you probably thought by this point the StarCraft Brood War competitive play was done. It's over, man. It's over. The Korean players, they're all switching over to two. No going back. Well, you might be a little bit wrong in that. You see, Team Liquid has announced their Team Liquid Legacy Star League qualifiers in which you, yes you, can qualify for one of 24 spots. Now, this is open to all players who do not live in Korea or China. The first qualifier takes place on January 12th, that's Friday, uh, and there will be six qualifiers between then and January 27th. You want to find out more details, check the show notes right now. There is a link you can go check out all the details about what you need to do to try and earn a spot in that Brood War tournament. Uh, other esports news, you know, more StarCraft II kind of stuff. Stefano will be competing in the Code S GSL. Now, this is the premier StarCraft II league in Korea. I mean, this is just you know massive for a Westerner to now start competing in Code S. Just, he, that guy's just been on a roll when he stays sober, right? Uh, the SCV League, known once as uh, TSL, is disbanding. Now, TSL, premier Korean team that house players such as Polt, Symbol, and Hyun. Uh, now, Polt left the team just a couple weeks ago to go study in the U.S., and it seemed to have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, a lot of players had been leaving the team in late 2012, and it seems with Polt leaving, that was yeah, just too much, and the team has, in fact, disbanded. Uh, and finally, Season 1, 2013 StarCraft II has begun. Not a whole lot of uh, StarCraft II news this week, but hey, it's 
get into uh, Diablo. Stay a while and listen. All right, we're going to talk Diablo, and I'm sure you could probably guess what we're going to talk about. Yeah, it's kind of big news. You know, I don't, I don't even follow a lot of the gaming news all that closely anymore since I gave up my show, but even I saw this stuff all over the Twitter and, and everywhere. I just called it the Twitter. What am I doing? What am I, like, 80? Anyway, <clears throat> so as promised, Diablo PvP update blog was posted a couple days after Christmas. Now, Jay Wilson, he wrote some good news and some bad news. So the good news, all right? Dueling is going to be in patch 1.0.7, something that people have been asking for for a while, and indeed, they are now bringing this feature into Diablo 3. That's probably just to try and make up for the bad news, all right? You ready for this one? <clears throat> Team Deathmatch, no more. And PvP has been delayed overall. So that's right. The very Team Deathmatch that I got to play when I was at BlizzCon back in 2011, and I thought it was pretty cool, is gone. It's not happening. Um, it, they just felt it wasn't very compelling. And apparently, a lot of the testers felt like they got bored with it a little, you know, just too quickly. They just there wasn't a prolonged gaming experience, something that they would enjoy for hours on end. So they're cutting it. Uh, <clears throat> they feel like it's just not good enough for Diablo three, and so they're going to sort of retool, retweak, and look at some other possible things they can do to bring PvP into Diablo 3. Now, they are confirming and reiterating this will be a free addition. This won't be like, you know, something you have to pay for in an expansion. This will be something they tack on for free. But these are the things that they're now looking at when they're talking about new PvP modes, all right? It's going to play up to the strengths of the character classes. It's going to focus on objectives beyond just defeating other players and possibly even integrate some PvE elements and rewards. So BlizzPlanet has started to wonder, Eldorian in particular, could they be maybe thinking along the lines of MOBA? Something close to that. I mean, it definitely plays to all of those strengths. You know, the whole PvE, PvP, just mixing all those things together. Now granted, they are also working on Blizzard All-Stars, which is a MOBA, so it's kind of hard to say. But you still got to wonder exactly what are they going to figure out, what are they going to play with, what are they going to tweak, and, and what are they going to bring to us. Now they've also said that PV, they're, they're not confirming anymore that PvP will be a part of patch 1.1. They've said it's delayed, so it's kind of hard to see, say if we can still keep calling 1.1 the PvP patch at this point. Now, for a long time, BlizzPlanet, we have defended Blizzard about Diablo 3 and their PvP. We were glad that they put PvP on a back burner to make sure the game got out. We try to defend them because they've been working so hard to improve the standard campaign experience, but this is getting a little bit ridiculous. It's been almost 10 months now since the game released, and we don't have PvP. We don't even have a release date for PvP. It keeps getting pushed back. At this point, it's going to be not very long, and it'll have been a year since the game came out, and no PvP. And at that point, that's more than a bit ridiculous. And, uh, you know, even we can't... <laughs> we don't have their backs on this one anymore. It's, it's, it's just too much. It's, too, it's, it's ridiculous, okay? We need our PvP. And here's something I personally wonder about. Unless your Team Deathmatch is completely broken, why are you canceling it? Can't you bring us more than one PvP mode? P the, P the Team Deathmatch that was in there seemed like it was the perfect thing if you're like, you know, i got a half an hour to kill and I want to play some Diablo 3. I'll go do a Team Deathmatch. If it's not broken, why toss it out? Maybe you don't think it's good enough, but as long as it's good, just give us some other stuff that's better. But anyway, that's my own diatribe on that one. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's get into, well... I keep trying to call it Keyboard Confessional video, and I know that sounds stupid. And I've asked you all, but you haven't given me any feedback. So, uh, you know what? You fuckers can't make up your minds. I'm just going to start changing the name every single week. So well, this time, we're going to call it, oh, let's call it the Blizz Planet Bitch Session. So you got me all worked up about the title, and honestly, I'm not even that pissed off about the subject matter of this one. But maybe a little bit. Okay, so the big question comes up. What do Blizzard community managers do? Now, many of you, I'm sure, are active on the Blizzard forums, the official Blizzard forums. Therefore, you're familiar with, with what are called blue posts. Now, these are posts by 
Blizzard employees, whether they be developers, Q&A, uh, designers, uh, sorry, QA, um, and their posts are in blue. But more often than not, these are actually posted by community managers. Uh, now, some of these posts are, are pe from people you've heard of a lot, all right? Some, some very popular community managers, Bashiok, Zerahim, uh, Netheria, Liliria, and Veyflare. You've seen them all over the forums, all right? Those are community managers. Now, those aren't all the community, community managers by any means, but what do they do? Now, here's the thing. They're not developers. They're not designers. They write blog posts on the Blizzard websites. They share information they've learned from the developers and give that to the players. They post messages on social networks like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all these other things uh, related to Blizzard. <clears throat> they interact with the fans online and at live events like PAX and BlizzCon when they have it. And they moderate those official forums that you've been to. Now, they're very public figures, but they get misconstrued a lot of times. People will be asking them, why are you talking about this instead of doing it? Doing it isn't their job. There's big old teams of people who their job is to program stuff, to design stuff, to make the art, to make the games, to make the games great. That's not what community managers do. Their job is to talk to us, to interact with the community. And that goes both ways. They also take the feedback from the community and bring it back to the teams that create the games, the designers, the developers, Mike Morham himself. And there's a reason that a lot of the things that people keep asking for in the various games keep getting implemented in subsequent patches. The community managers are listening. The actual developers don't have time to listen to everything. After all, they're developing. That's what the community managers are there for. They're there to listen, they're there to talk, they're there to you know, take all of this information and figure out, okay, what are people asking for the most? What do people want the most? And to answer your questions at least as much as they can. That's something else that becomes a problem. A lot of people are like, well, why didn't you answer this question? Why didn't you answer that question? In a lot of ways, they're sort of an extension of the PR team. They don't know everything for one, because they're not the developers, and for two, there's a limit to what they're gonna be allowed to say. You know, we don't know what Titan is yet, other than it's an MMO. So I guarantee you, no community manager is going to tell you anything beyond, it's called Titan right now, and it's going to be an MMO. That's just how that works. Everything else is a closely guarded secret. Uh, you know, so don't expect them to go and telling all the little secrets of Blizzard. That's not their job. They're not going to rat out their employer. You know, it's, there just seems to be a lot of confusion against these guys. And really, they're just working really hard to bring you a lot of information and then bring the information back to Blizzard. And <clears throat> so it's good things to keep in mind like that. When you're dealing with community managers, keep in mind exactly what their job is when you're interacting with them. And, you know, mad props to all those guys and gals for doing that great job they do with the community. So we're going to finish up talking about a giveaway. Now, if you've been following our Facebook or the actual Blizz Planet site, you'll know there's some big giveaway going on right now, okay? It is the 10th anniversary, the 10th birthday, if you will, of BlizzPlanet.com. Pretty awesome. Eldorian's been rocking that thing for a decade now. To celebrate, normally, when you have a birthday, people give you presents. Well, apparently Eldorian's a little confused. We're giving you presents, all right? We have massive giveaways going on right now to celebrate the 10th anniversary, the 10th birthday of BlizzPlanet.com. So I'm going to read off all these things, but first I want to tell you how to enter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Blizz Planet Gaming. Just hit that little subscribe button and then comment on this video. You can simply say, you know, give me prizes or whatever, or you can comment on some of the great content we've been going over here, right? Or, you know, the fantastic beard, and you just can't get enough of it, I know. Uh, but, you know, just throw down a comment, subscribe, and you will be entered to win. Now, let's get into those prizes, right? So first up is the big winner. Now this is one US winner only. You will get one StarCraft II messenger bag, one Razer Marauder StarCraft II gaming keyboard, one Razer Spectre StarCraft II gaming mouse, one Razer Banshee StarCraft II gaming headset, one novel Heaven's Devils by William C. Dietz, and one Cloisson pin StarCraft II Zergling. The runner up, one winner in the US only, one Razer Marauder StarCraft II Gaming Keyboard. One Razer Spectre StarCraft II Gaming Mouse. One Razer Banshee StarCraft II Gaming Headset. One Novel Heaven's Devils by William C. Dietz. And one Cloisson Pin StarCraft II Zergling. Consolation, two winners, US only. One Novel Heaven's Devils by William C. Dietz. And one Cloisson Pin StarCraft II Zergling. Let's play, 10 winners and open to all. One Heart of the Swarm Beta Key. 
Now I do need to reiterate uh, just one last time there. You notice I said US only on a lot of those. There are so much stuff that we're giving away right now, we just can't afford to ship that stuff all around the globe. So when you throw down a comment, do indicate which country you live in. And don't think you can cheat and say, hi, I'm US, because if you win, we'll still have to get your address and we'll know and you won't get anything and you'll be a dick. So Wheaton's Law, don't be a dick. So please comment, tell us what country you're in and feel free, if you're outside the U.S., still throw it down. You can win one of those 10 Heart of the Swarm beta keys. And if you're in the U.S., yeah, there's some just killer stuff you can win right there, okay? All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week.